Uh, I haven't been listening to many records right now, but I've been listening to a lot of singles that have been coming out. To name a few, Spirit Box, The Void, and that's an awesome new song. Uh, Fit for an Autopsy's new song, Hellions. Balancing Composure came back with two new songs. I forget what the EP's called, but they put out a vinyl for it and everything. So glad to see them come back. Teenagerous is another cool indie band that put out a new song called Sunshine I've been jamming. So all kinds of great music in the more rock world and the death metal world. Yeah, yeah, we have two new singles that just came out, one of which is called Predestination Paradox, and the other is called I Found the Dark Side of Heaven. But that's all you guys will hear from like Monster Flames in 2023. Yeah, so there's a band that our singer Chris showed me. I think they're from Norway, but they're called Frostbit, and they're one of those like Genty Prog. Thal, I actually think, is what people call them, but they are super drop tuned. They're using crazy whammies and like different pitch shift effects and it almost sounds like some of the guitar sounds they're making are with like synthesizers or, some, or something but it's straight up just them using whammies and different glitch effects so as a guitarist I need to know what they're doing I need to know how they're making those sounds happen and I think Sheet Happens could let us know what's going on. <laughs> Uh, for me, that would have to be Tom DeLong from Blink-182. Uh, I know that's like a left field answer since I'm a metal guitarist now, but growing up, that was like the first band that like I found on the radio that I was like, I need to know who this band is. I need their CDs now. Super into that, like the punk rock world, which then led me into the metal world. But I think as starting out as a guitar player, learning those Blink songs was like good enough because I could learn them on my own while still taking lessons uh, as a beginner. And I do think Tom has a very strong right hand as a guitar player because those downstroke Paul Mutes he's doing are insane. And I feel like me being a heavy handed right hand guitar player, that really helped me early on to like form those habits of just like digging in to my strings when I'm playing. Right now I'm using Diderio NYXL 11 to 64. I think there's a sweet spot for both of them because I feel like I definitely need solitude and time alone to be able to sit in my like home studio and write and come up with some cool ideas. But after a while I get drained from that. So I feel like getting to go out and tour, play music that we've already written, see how that goes over live, see if it's you know still fun for me to play live. And on top of that, getting a tour with a bunch of other bands that you know, you're know you around every day, they're awesome people that inspire you. I think there's just a lot of good that comes out of touring inspiration wise. So I think that it's a delicate balance of like you need to tour to kind of keep honing in on your craft, see what you want to do, see what new ideas come, and then equal time, solitude, and getting those ideas out and actually making them come to life as a song. I would love to start a side project down the road. Me and Chris from my band have always talked about doing something. We just don't know what genre to start because we think indie rock would be cool. We think like post hardcore would be sweet. So I think it's just a matter of finding something different enough from like moths that would, you know, scratch the itch to do something else. But besides that, I love to cook. I actually have a job as a prep cook when I'm off tour. And I also like to take those skills and like make things from scratch at home whenever I have the time to at least. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, not with our setup now. I would say to just keep at it, maybe be a little stricter with some goals and actually like practicing different techniques, not staying stagnant with what you know. I do think there's like, it's a double-edged sword because I think it's nice to stay with what you know because you can really hone in on that and like create your own technique of that. But also in my case, I do wish I could tell younger me to expand out and like maybe get a little stronger with my left hand, learn how to sweep pick because I still can't do that. And besides stuff like that, just, you know, make goals, be, be realistic with it and, you know, obviously don't give up. I have not, but with having different fill-ins and stuff come in to tour with us, they have been a godsend, having examples to actually show them with the guitar pros as well, so even if they're not visual with seeing that, they can at least listen and read them as they go. So I think that being able to have that as an asset to the band just helps in so many ways, because I guarantee I'll probably forget some stuff down the road. <laughs> From our current set, it has to be Spiritual Eclipse. Like I mentioned earlier, that end breakdown is just chaos. The drum modulation is insane, so I think it's just fun. It's an ass beater of a breakdown, but it's also challenging to stay on time with that. So I think it's a collective of all three of those things. Yeah. 
It's always hard to pick because there's so many great cities out there, but I'm gonna have to go self-interest on this one. Pittsburgh, gotta give uh, some hometown love out there. As chaotic as it is with like playing the show and tour managing and all that stuff, having all kinds of friends and family out, it's a hectic day, but it's such a rewarding day at the same time. So my bucket list for the last couple years has been to hit Australia. We're finally hitting Australia this August, so I'm very excited about that. Besides that, next on my bucket list would be Japan. Right now, I gotta say the Neural DSP Quad Cortex. We just got our hands on them last summer, and being a band that has only been heads and cabs and pedal boards our entire career, like as fun as it is to use analog gear, it's been super rewarding and convenient to finally step into the digital world and learn how to use that and go cabless on tour, because it's just convenient. Your sound stays consistent. You don't have to lug cabs around and hurt your back anymore. So I'm very intrigued by that with all the different options that you can do with it. It's insane. <laughs> Absolutely. Two of my favorite bands both have books on the Sheet Happens catalog. First up would be Census Fail Still Searching. This just came out uh, actually around the same time as our double EP book. Census Fail is one of my favorite bands growing up and whatnot, so I think getting to actually take a deep dive into this and really see how they're diving into some of these riffs would be awesome just to reminisce a little bit and actually learn how to play some of these songs that I really enjoyed growing up and still enjoy today. Next up would be Fit for an Autopsy or What the Future Holds. These dudes are insanely talented in the metalcore and deathcore world. And I just think seeing like all the technical things that they do actually on tabs would help improve any guitarist's skill in this genre. Uh, Will Putney, their primary writer, is an amazing guitarist and stuff, so I think just getting to actually look at these tabs would kind of give you like a look inside his mind on what he's actually doing when he writes this insane stuff. Yeah, fit for an autopsy and census fail.